Now we analyze this question. It's about displacement. It's a uh, considered there that runs from point A to B. The distance that there runs can be greater than the magnitude of its displacement, but the magnitude of the displacement cannot be greater than the distance it runs. Let's go to understand what he is asking. It's possible that the animal start here and displace from A to B. Okay, the displacement will be this one. This is the displacement. Will be a negative displacement. And the amount of displacement, the magnitude of the displacement, is the positive quantity, is the amount of, of uh, displacement. So, uh, but the animal can do like this. He can go to the right, and at the end he will end in the point V, so he will go D1, a distant D1, Coming back, he will travel another distance, d1 positive, another d1, and later on he will displace the distance. He, he will move through the distance d2. So the total distance that the animal will travel is d1 plus d1 plus this distance d2. Here is the displacement. The amount of displacement uh, the magnitude of the displacement is here. So as you see, the total distance that the animal is traveling is bigger than the amount of displacement because the displacement in this case will be, let's go to put numbers, let's go to put numbers. So let's say that the point A is at 100 meters. Let's say that the point B is at 9 meters. So the displacement is x final, the displacement is x final minus x initial. The displacement will be x final, 90, minus x initial, 100. The displacement will be minus 10 meters. Okay, and the amount of the displacement is writing like this. The magnitude is 10. The magnitude is something that is Displacement in another thing. The displacement have direction, positive or negative. The amount of displacement have no signs or have always positive sign. So, what I said is that the amount of the displacement is 10 meters, but the animal can do like this. He can walk from A to any possible point, maybe X equal to 100, so he will walk 100 meters in the in the first uh, in the first trip another 100 meters in the second trip 100 plus 100 200 and later on he will walk the 10 meters here plus 10 meters mm, this is the 10 meter the, the amount of displacement the magnitude of the displacement so the distance traveled by the animal let's go to put animal animal it will be always bigger than the displacement. So let's go to read what it says. The distance of the Dirk runs can be greater than the magnitude of his displacement, yes. But the magnitude of the displacement can never be greater than the distance it runs. Yes, it can be equal sometimes, but never greater. Yes, it's true, it's true. Okay, let's go to the second question. Which of the following uh, you, uh, quantities have unit of displacement? Displacement is meter, kilometers, miles. So I see 40 kilometers southwest have the dimension of displacement. Yes, yes, this is C. And these have a dimension of displacement, 186,000 miles is displacement. This is not displacement, it's meter per second squared. This is an acceleration, this is velocity, and the other C and D is displacement. Okay. Well, this we have solved in question one, so this is the problem. You have a point X initial, X1, and you have a point X2, so the, this is the observer, of course, and you move from the point initial to the point uh, final, so the displacement will be this displacement delta x. 
perfect. So delta x is this displacement to the right in this case. But the distance is the distance that you travel is always a positive quantity. So you can start here. Maybe you move to the left. And from here, you move to the right. Okay, and you end here. So you perform this distance, d1, and another, again, this distance, d1, and this distance, d2, that, by the way, d2 is equal to the magnitude of delta x in this case. So the distance that you travel uh, uh, is... Uh, is, uh, is not necessary the, your displacement. The only way to be your displacement is that you go directly from x1 to x2, and in this case, the displacement and the distance that you travel are the same. But sometimes, and even doing like this, is not the same. For example, x1 is here and x2 is here. So the displacement is something negative. So delta x, let's say this is 90, this is 100, so delta x will be minus 10. So the displacement is not the same thing that the distance. The distance that you travel in this case is 10 meters, if you go directly from the point to. So the distance is a positive quantity, while the displacement has sign. There is uh, one situation when the displacement is equal to the distance, that is when you move in the, from here to here and directly. But you see all the incredible things that they say you and you see which one adapt to what you think. Now this question say when the average velocity of an object is equal to the instantaneous velocity. So the average velocity is, you take the graph x and t, and you have a, mm, a, the position curve. So the average velocity is, this is the point a, so this is t1, this is x1, and this is another point t2 at the time t2, and this is x2. So the average velocity, v average, of v, the velocity, is delta x divided by delta t. Delta x is the chain in x. The chain in x is here. You see the triangle, the chain in x is here. And delta t is here, is the vertical distance divide by the horizontal distance. So it's the slope. The slope, you see the triangle. Let's go to make the triangle. This is the triangle. This is the triangle. This is the slope. So the slope is different when uh, the point, the average, the slope, is different when the point is near. And the instantaneous velocity is related when this point, the elapsed time delta t is very small. So they have different slope, but there is one situation when the slope is the same. And the situation when the slope is the same is a rectilinear line. When there is a rectilinear line, you have to one point, t1, x1, t2, x2, this is the x, this is the t, and the slope is delta x divided by delta t. Because the slope is constant, even if you approach to the point very near, the slope will be always the same. So v instantaneous is equal to v average if x of t is a rectilinear line, rectilinear line. So you choose here uh, what is the correct answer. Only when the velocity is decreasing, no. When the velocity is constant, 
Only when the velocity, well, what it say? Let me see. Only when the velocity is decreasing at a constant rate. When the average, uh, if the velocity is the velocity, no position. When the only when the nev, uh, uh, when oh, oh my God, is is better not to read the answer and to and to solve the question without reading the possible option or, or, or answer because it makes you too confused. Only when the velocity is decreasing, if the velocity is decreasing, the, uh, the no, 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 when the velocity is constant, uh, the position, well, when the velocity is constant, when the velocity is constant, um, the graph of x as a function of t is a rectilinear line because the velocity, the velocity, is the slope of the graph x of t. x of t is the slope. So if the slope is constant, you have a rectilinear line. OK, so the answer is b. Now let's go to solve this problem. This uh, It's a velocity. You drive 6 kilometers at uh, 50 kilometers per hour. So the first trip that you drive is you drive a distance d1 if some direction we don't know in what direction is maybe to the right maybe to the left uh, six kilometers six kilometers and you drive at the speed of performing 50 kilometers in each hour 50 kilometers per hour means that in one hour you perform 50 a distance of 50 kilometers or always positive and later on, you move again another distance, maybe to the right, maybe to the left. Uh, we have to add distance uh, because the distance are always quantity that are positive. You move six kilometers again, maybe back, maybe going back, maybe yeah, again to the right. But now the velocity is 90 kilometers per hour. Um, no, the velocity, no. The speed. Speed, the speed, the speed. How we will we'll call the speed is the magnitude of V, the magnitude of V. So the magnitude of V will be the speed, and the speed is the distance divided by time. So what is the average speed here? The average speed here, it's say your average speed over the 12 kilometers, your average speed over the 12 kilometers, is the average speed is the total distance divided by the total time. Mm. So this is the average speed. Mm -hmm. Total distance divided by total time. What is the total distance? Well, the total distance is 6 kilometers. I will always add in. Plus 6 kilometers. It's not like the displacement. Maybe the second... A motion can be, if it's displacement, is something completely different. I hope it will be clear. So the total distance will be 12 kilometers. And the total time is being calculated here. The first time, T1, 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 you know, if the speed is distance divided by time, the time is distance divided by speed. I name the speed like the magnitude of V. So in the first motion, the time T is the distance that he performed divided by the speed. The distance that they perform is six kilometers per hour, six kilometers, and the speed is 50 kilometers per hour. So the time that he is walking is six divided by 50 hours. In the second motion, T2, is the same distance, he travel another six kilometers, but now his speed, the speed, not the velocity, the speed is bigger, is 90 kilometers per hour. So he travel a smaller time uh, because he's running faster, is 60 by 90 hours. So 
the average velocity is the total distance divided by the total time. Let's go to C. The total distance is 6 plus 6. And the total time is 6 divided by 50 plus 6 divided by 90. 6 plus 6, 12. So I can walk, I can work a little bit uh, algebraically speaking. Um, and it will be 6 that multiply 1 divided by 50 plus 1 divided by 90. But this is the same that 12 divided by 6, that is 2. And 1 divided by 50 by 1 divided by 90 is the same that 1 divided by 50 one minus 1. So I will solve inside and I will do it uh, minus 1, that is uh, interchanging the numerator with the denominator. So it will be. Um, it will be 2, this is, will be 90 plus 50, 90 plus 50, 90 plus 50, divide by 90, multiply by 50, minus 1, 2, now we'll do the inverse of this, minus 1, so we'll convert it to, I will change the numerator by the denominator, the denominator by the numerator, the denominator is here, it will be the numerator, the numerator is here, it will be the denominator. So I will walk with this expression again. Um, what will be 90 by 50 is 4,500. 90 plus 50 is 1,500. Um, uh, um, I will take one zero out. And it will be 450 by 2 is 900. 900 divided by 14 is like 64.2 kilometers per hour. And this is the average speed. Speed. Okay, and the problem is done. So you see which one is the, is the correct answer. Uh, 64.7. Uh, less than 70 kilometers per hour. The, this is the, should be the correct answer. Uh, yes, okay. The other way to do the problem is to say that the uh, average velocity is the first distance positive that it has traveled, that is V1 by T1, plus the second distance that it has traveled, V2 by T2, divided by the total times. So this is T1, this is T2, so this is the total distance, D1 divided by D2, divided by D1 plus T2. So if we do it, we should obtain the same result, 6 plus 6 divided by T1, T1 was, he was running at a, a 50 kilometers per hour, um, um, so it would be 6 divided by 50, and the other travel, the time was 6 divided by 90. This is T1, and this is T2. And if you uh, work with these numbers, you will obtain the same result. Uh, okay, so it will be equal if you want to work with the fractions, so it would be 90 by 6 plus 50 by 6 multiplied by 90 by 50. So the average velocity will be 12 90 by 50 divided by 90 by 6 plus 50 by 6. If you make the numbers, it will be, I suppose that it will be, if you make the number, it will be the same thing. It will be 54,000 divided by 140. It will give you the same result. So the problem is done. Now we are going to solve this question. Acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity divide by the change in time is the rate of change of the velocity is v2 minus v1 divided by t2 minus t1. 
Okay, this is acceleration. It say like this. So, and you see the acceleration on the graph V versus T. If you see a graph like this, there is an acceleration because at time T1, the velocity is V1. But at time T2, the velocity is V2. V2. So this is V2, this is V1, and the change in velocity is here. This is the change in velocity is here, V2 minus V1. V2 minus V1 is the blue one, and T2 minus T1 is the blue one, T2 minus T1. So this is T1, this is T2, and T2 minus T1 is this... T2 minus T1, that is delta T, is this part. And delta V, oh, so delta V divided by delta T, it has a slope. So in this case, it has acceleration. Indeed, the velocity is changing. Maybe here was 100 meters per second, maybe here 200 meters per second. So this happens in some fraction of time, so there is acceleration. So it says if the acceleration of an object is zero, oh, the acceleration is the slope in a graph V of t. If the acceleration is zero, the it means that the graph have no slope because the acceleration is zero. It means that the graph of the, of the particle is with constant velocity because if the acceleration is zero, if A is zero, because zero is delta V divided by delta T, that means that delta V is zero. Of course, the only way that you have a zero here if, it's the, if the numerator is zero because the denominator, the chain in time, is always positive. So zero divided by something is always zero. So if delta V is zero, it means that V2 minus V1 is zero. So it means that V final equal V initial. So if V final is equal V initial, so you start with a V initial, and V final is the same, T1, T2, so V1, and V2, so the line is a line that is an horizontal line with a slope zero. The acceleration equal zero means that the slope at the graph uh, at the graph of B versus T have zero, a zero slope. So this means that the acceleration is zero. So there is no change in velocity, cannot change. Okay, well now let's go to to read the question. If the acceleration of a voyage is zero, then that object cannot be moving. True or false? Of course that is, is false, completely false. It means that the velocity is constant. Of course there is a particular case when the velocity is constant and it is zero, 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 always not moving. But in general, the acceleration zero means that the object is not changing his velocity. He will maintain constant velocity. So if he's running at a speed of uh, 30 meters per second and the acceleration is zero, it means that the velocity will not change and will stay at 30 meters per second, always 30 meters per second. So it will be acceleration A equals zero. And the problem is solved. Now let's go to solve this problem. It's about acceleration and say, suppose the car is traveling to the west. Okay, this is the west, the east, the north, and the south. Okay, it's traveling to the uh, begin to slow down at its approach. So it's moving to the west, and it's moving at certain velocity, v1, uh, moving to the left, so it's negative velocity. Um, he see the traffic line, he apply the brakes, and his velocity decrease. So at time t2, 
his velocity, so V1 and V2 decrease. So what happened? There is an acceleration. Why there is an acceleration? Because acceleration is the change in velocity per unit of time. So it's V2 minus V1 divided by T2 minus T1. So what it say? When, when, which of the following is me about acceleration? Because the acceleration is zero. No, it changes its velocity. It's not zero. Since the car is slowing down, his acceleration must be negative. Mm, no, no, I'll explain you why. The acceleration is toward the west. No, the acceleration is toward to the east. Yes, this is the correct one. Why? Uh, the reason is that, uh, uh, see like this, this is V2. This is V2, very big. V1, sorry, this is V1, very big. This is V2, going to the left also. V2, let's say V2, very small, so it's almost stopping. So, what is, this is V2. What is V2 minus V1? V2 minus V1 is the one that goes from here to here. Mm. This is V2 minus V1, and it points to the right. So the acceleration, because it's pointing to the right, the acceleration is positive acceleration. So the acceleration is toward the east. Okay, let's go to do the numbers. So imagine that V1 is minus 100 meters per second, and V2 is minus 10 meter per second, it means that he's moving to the left according to the minus sign and with a big speed. And V2 is moving to the left with a smaller speed. Is this picture V1 moving to the left negative with a big speed and V2 moving to the left also with a smaller magnitude of the velocity, the speed. So V2 minus V1 will be minus 10 minus minus 100. So this will be equal plus 90. So this is equal plus 90 pointing to the right. So the acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So V2 minus V1 is positive. And delta t is always positive, so the acceleration is positive acceleration. Positive acceleration means that the acceleration is going to the right acceleration. Okay, we will see this more often when we see vectors, and you will get a better idea of this. Okay, now we are going to do the same similar questions. Let me see, suppose that a car is traveling to the east. So if it's traveling to the east, it's traveling in the positive x direction. This is the east, okay. And this is the car, it's traveling to the, from here. I can put it here or I can put it here, the car, it doesn't matter. But it's traveling in this direction. So, uh, I'm beginning to slow down, so initially, if we begin to slow down, initially his velocity, V was very big, V1. And V2 is very small, V2. So V1 is like this. And V2 is like this. And where is V2 minus V1? V2 minus V1 is like this. This is V2 minus V1. Let's go to do numbers. Delta V, the acceleration is delta V divided by delta T. But I'm not worried about the sign of delta T because delta T is always positive. Delta V is V2 minus V1. Imagine V2 equal 
mm, imagine V1 equal positive 100 meters per second. Imagine V2 smaller, positive 10 meters per second because it's living. So what is V2 minus V1? Delta V is V2 minus V1 or V2 10 V2 10 minus V2 minus V1 is 10 minus 100 so it's minus 90 meters per second so the sign of uh, delta V is minus 90 so he's pointing to the left so the acceleration is negative so the acceleration A is negative in this case right so let's go now its acceleration is decreasing uh, its acceleration is the positive direction x no the correct answer is this one the acceleration is in the negative x direction and this is the answer now let's go to do uh, question 9 say if the position versus time of a graph of an object is an horizontal line so this is the x and this is the time if it's an horizontal line it means that the object doesn't move the x with time with any time become at the same position so he will not move he will always stay here so the slope of the graph is the velocity so the velocity is zero okay um, and let's go the object is moving with constant non-zero speed no the velocity is so is at rest yes is at rest moving with constant non-zero acceleration no 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 moving with increasing speed no and the answer is b okay now we go to the other question now let's go to solve this other question it say if the velocity versus time graph of an object is a straight line making if the velocity versus time velocity velocity versus time of an object is a straight line straight line making an angle of 30 degrees 30 degrees this is 30 degrees 30 degrees this is always 30 degree always 30 degree okay slope constant so it's a rectilinear line so uh, this is a rectilinear line the acceleration a is constant because the acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. The acceleration is the slope, is the slope in the graph Vt. Okay, perfect, perfect, is the acceleration is constant. So, mm, the acceleration is constant. Uh, uh, clockwise, is extreme making a clock counterclockwise counterclockwise with time axis this is a moving with increased acceleration i see that he is moving with increased velocity and i see that the velocity v1 at time t1 t2 v2 the velocity is increasing at constant slope so velocity is increasing and because it's a rectilinear line the acceleration a delta v divided by delta t that is the slope the acceleration is constant this is what i see from what it say moving with increasing acceleration no the acceleration is constant moving with constant non-zero acceleration oh well, yes moving with non-constant with constant non-zero acceleration yes is at rest no it's not at rest it's moving the velocity is changing moving with constant non-zero speed moving with constant no 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 the speed is also changing no so the only one is the v 
Now with a graphical analysis, which of the following graph represent an object having zero acceleration? Zero acceleration means that the velocity never change. Oh, I see here zero acceleration. Here is zero acceleration because the, the, this, uh, uh, this one is zero acceleration. Zero acceleration means that the chain in V divided by the chain in time is zero. Because the V doesn't change, zero acceleration is here, A equals zero. Zero acceleration, so this is the graph of X versus T. So, the velocity is the slope of the graph. If delta x divided by delta t is the velocity. And the slope is constant, so the velocity is constant. So the acceleration is also zero here. Let's go to see here. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so this one is v versus t. And the velocity is changing because the velocity is increasing, so it's not acceleration, it's not zero, it's different than zero in this case. The question says which of the following represents an object having zero acceleration? Yes, this one. Yes, this one. And the velocity here is changing, it's changing, so delta v is different than zero, so this is acceleration different than zero. As a result, uh, the graph A and B. A and B represent a particle that is moving with zero acceleration. A and B. As you see, it's better first to solve the question and later on to see what are the possible uh, answers, because otherwise you can get Let's go to the next one. The graph of in the figure shows the position of a particle as it travels on the x-axis. Uh, at what value of t the speed of the particle is equal to zero meters per second? Wow. So uh, the position is zero when t equals one second. When t equal to seconds, the position is two meters. When t equal three seconds, the position is something like three meters, three meters afar. So the object is approaching, you know, he was here at the time t equal one second. At the time t equal two second, he was here. At the time t equal three second, he was here. And at the time, 3.1 second, he was coming back. So the object did like this. Did like this. This is the x-axis. This is the 0. This is the 3. So the object between within a, one second and three seconds, he was approaching the 3. You see? He was, the x is approaching the 3. So, uh, t equal one second. After sometimes t equal two seconds, and um, at t equal three seconds is here. T equal three seconds, and t equal two point nine seconds. Two point ninety ninety nine. He was here, and. Um, at t equal 3.0001, he was here also. So the object did like this. It was moving like this at time t equal 2.999. And it was moving like this at time t equal 3.00001. So in the middle, he has reversed his velocity, he must have a zero. So the velocity is zero at t equal three. The other way to see it is when the velocity delta x divided by delta t will be zero. So you take the three, let's go to erase here. Let's go to erase this. 
So the other way to see that at 3 the velocity will be 0, you take like this. These two points, T1 and T2, around, very near the point three, T equal 3. And delta x, oh, there is no delta x between T1 and T2, the delta x is 0. So the velocity around the time t equal 3 seconds, it will be 0 because delta x will be 0. If you stretch a lot this, um, this uh, if you stretch noise, you will compress this time, this width of time delta t very, very small, delta x will be 0 and delta t will be some number, small number, but it will be zero, but the velocity will be zero. The other way to see is the velocity is the slope. You see the slope? The slope is like one. Now, the slope is a little bit a smaller slope. It's like 0 0.5. Now, as I'm in my map approaching, 0 0.2, later slope. On here, the slope is zero. So, Let's go to erase everything and say again, say again, the slope here is positive and maybe one. So the velocity is one meter per second. When you approach, the slope is smaller. So the velocity that is the measure, the slope, uh, the velocity is the slope in a graph x of t, is delta x divided by delta t, the slope which will be smaller, let's say 0 0.5 meters per second. When you approach to the maximum, the slope will be zero. And this maximum is at the position three. So t equal three is the result. At what value of t is the speed of the particle equal zero meters per second? Is at t equal three, is not only the speed, is the velocity that is instantaneous velocity that is zero. Okay. Next, next question is this one, graphical analysis. A child standing on a bridge throw a rock straight down. The rock leaves the child hand at time t equals zero. If we take upward at the as the direction, if we take Upward as the, the positive direction. Which of the graphs below represent the acceleration of the stunt as a function of time? Well, so this problem say a child standing on a bridge uh, show a rock straight down, the rock leaves the child hand at t equal zero. If we take upward direction, which, uh, what? So the positive direction is going upward, so this is the uh, y direction, positive, and g is going the acceleration that is subject, uh, any, any object is g mm, going in the negative direction, equal minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so, so the acceleration is not like this, because this acceleration means that the acceleration is changing with time, it's even bigger uh, when the time pass. Uh, this acceleration is positive, so this cannot be. This acceleration is positive, it arrived to a maximum and the acceleration decreased, nothing to be, the acceleration is always constant and negative, so the solution will be this one. And of course, this one is not because the acceleration is decreasing, is zero at some times. I hope it will be zero sometimes, so the acceleration is zero. You will maintain constant your velocity at this point, your that the acceleration is zero. It means that the, your velocity will not increase at this exact in instant. Um, uh, so, <laughs> if your acceleration is zero, your change in velocity, instantaneously speaking, will be zero. Uh, let's go to the next question. 
Next question say graphical analysis. You have two objects, the C and the D. There are two cars. This is position respect to time. So the car, the first car, the C car, it's a, a star at x equals zero, at t equals zero, while the second car, so we can put xc, xc equals zero, t equals zero, while xd is some amount, some amount, let's say three meters, maybe, three meters positive, maybe, uh, whatever it is. So um, which one is uh, have a bigger slope? The one that has a bigger slope is the one that has a bigger velocity. So the velocity of this one is higher, and the velocity I can measure like the, the chain in x. The velocity is the chain in x divided by the chain in time. Why the velocity of c is bigger than the velocity of the object d, d delta x divided by delta t? Why? Because you take uh, two times, let's say this one and this one maybe. <clears throat> um, on the first one, uh, well, let's go to take another one, the, this, these two times, this time and this time. On this interval of time, the change in, y, in x, the change in x is this, this is the change in x. So basically, during this interval of time t1, t2, that the chain in time is delta t equal t2 minus t1, the object has performed delta x, this distance delta x. Why for the c a car, in the same interval of time, you see that the delta x is bigger. So the slope is bigger, so v sub c is bigger than v sub d. Now let's go to, to see uh, what it says. Both cars have the same acceleration. Okay, the velocity of each car is constant, so the acceleration of the car A and the acceleration of the car B is zero because the velocity is constant. v sub a is constant constant, and V sub V is constant, and we said that V sub C, so no, it's not V sub C, V sub C, sorry, V no, it's not A and B, it's C and D, V sub C, <coughs> <coughs> the velocity is constant, and V sub C is bigger than V sub D. So the acceleration of A sub C is zero, and the acceleration of A, A sub D is zero, so v sub c is constant, and v sub d is constant, but this constant, the v sub d, is smaller than the v sub c. v sub c is bigger than v sub d, but because it has bigger slope, bigger slope, and the slope is so. Uh, both cars have the same acceleration. Oh, well, yes, both cars have the same acceleration, zero, yes. a sub c equals zero, a sub v equals zero, yes, it's true, it's true. The magnitude of the acceleration of the car is greater than the man, no, 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 they are equal. The car meets at 10 equal 10 seconds, yes, when x, when t equal 10, I can see that x sub c is here and x sub d is here, they meet, and they meet at the same time, and at the same mm, position, so they have a collision. So they 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 they, they, have, they, they can't meet at the same thing. Well, yes, yes. The magnitude of the acceleration of the car C is less than no. The, the acceleration is zero. Um, cannot be equal. Uh, they, is, they are equal. Acceleration of C and acceleration of D is equal. So this is no. At time t equal 10 seconds, both cars have the same velocity. No, they have velocity, they, they have a slope difference in the in x of t, in the in the graph x of t, the velocity is the slope. So this slope is bigger than this slope. So v sub c at t, at t 
t equal 10 seconds, the velocity is bigger than for the car t. So this is no, no. And the problem is solved. Okay? Let's go to the... Okay, so graphical analysis, the motion of the car on a track, this is the velocity, this is the time t, uh, okay, it's a graph of velocity versus time, and it say um, the track is moving with constant velocity, this is the track, what is the displacement that he will perform, so you see that V is delta x divided by delta t. So delta x is V by delta t. Mm -hmm. What is V? V is this. What is delta t? Maybe this. What is V by delta t is this area. Perfect. What is the displacement of the track between zero and t? So this is v, and this is this, this is the amount of velocity that he has. is a constant velocity, and at the time t, he has performed a displacement. What is the displacement for this graph? The displacement delta x is v by delta t. So the displacement delta x is the velocity of the track t by the time t. And this is the area that is here. Mm -hmm. What happened with the car? The car is not moving with constant velocity like the track. The car is moving with acceleration. It starts with velocity zero. This one, the track has an advantage. It starts with velocity b equal whatever it is, maybe 100 meters per second. Maybe 100 meters per second and maintain his velocity always. And the displacement delta x will be 100 meters per second multiplied by the time t that is being considered here. It's equivalent to say what is the area that is behind the curve b on the graph velocity time t. Now the other one, he does like this. He does like this. Mm -hmm. So what is the displacement of the other one? Well, we can think in this way. We take a small delta x, and delta x will be v by delta t. So the displacement that he will perform will be for this graph. Let's go to put it here to not confuse. OK, this graph, this is the t. It will be v by delta t. See, so this is a small delta t, a very small delta t. So this is the area that is here. So the displacement in a graph Bt can be calculated by seeing the area that is below the curve. So this, but you see that in the same um, delta t, the area is bigger because the velocity is bigger. He is performing bigger delta x, and the total uh, displacement that he can do is, again, the total area. So what is the area? The area, let's say, <coughs> the area now will be the scale. Now, the area in this case is the area of a triangle. And the triangle have a base t. I have the half is the velocity v of the track, uh, v sub t, velocity of the track. So the area that is here, the area represents the displacement. So the displacement of the car will be one half of 
the area, the, the area is one half the base by the half v sub t. So the displacement of the car is smaller than the displacement of the track. So the track is, at the time t, the track is, uh, is, uh, is father. That he has performed a bigger displacement than uh, what has performed the car. Uh, the car is moving with constant acceleration because the graph of the velocity has a slow constant and the velocity is changing continuously and the rate of change is constant. So, for one side we have delta x of the track equal v of the track by the time t and for the other side we have the delta x of the car. The displacement that has performed at the time t is one half. So they perform one, uh, the, the car perform at the time t one half of the uh, displacement. So delta x of the, of the track is two times delta x of the car. Mm -hmm. This is uh, what I have uh, obtained. Two times delta x of the car will be if I multiply here 2 times delta x of the car, will be delta x of the track. Okay. Now let's go to read what it say. What it say? The track will not have moved. What it say? The two vehicles are, are initially alongside each other uh, at time t equals 0. Okay. Uh, the two vehicles uh, initially comes from the same position. Okay. This, uh, it says, at the time t, what is true of the distance traveled by the vehicle since t equals zero? The track will not have moved. Oh. The track is moving all the time. It has velocity. And the velocity is this amount. It's constant velocity. Yeah. So the track has is moving. So no, the track will have will, the car will have traveled farther than the track. No, we have see, we have seen that this is a no. Is the the track the is the track that will have traveled farther than the car? They will have traveled the same distance. No, the track will have traveled farther than the car. Yes, this is the correct answer. Okay. So in this question, what you have learned? You have learned that when you have a graph of velocity versus time, maybe this graph, maybe this graph, it doesn't matter. The velocity is changing. Here, the velocity is changing at constant rates, so the acceleration is constant. Here, the velocity v as a function of time is changing, but is the acceleration is not constant, it's changing. Every time, the acceleration becomes bigger, this part becomes bigger and bigger, so the acceleration is not constant. But even if the acceleration is not constant, the displacement between zero, this is t, between zero and t is the area. The displacement between zero and t is the area. And this is something that we have to analyze with the calculus. It is being analyzed better using calculus, but this is the idea. So, in the graph b of t, the displacement delta x is here, is the area that is between zero and t is the area that is behind the curve. If, if the curve b and t, the function v and t will be like this, and the velocity chain this way, it also is true. The area will be the displacement performed by the object. Okay, now let's go to the question 17, say three, four. 
free fall it doesn't mean that uh, the object is falling um, indeed it can be going up uh, free fall is that uh, the object uh, is free to fall is free to fall this is the thing that we have to read it is free to fall so the object can go up um, it's free to fall <laughs> so, a rock from a volcanic eruption is launched straight up into the air so it go up with no resistance. Which one of the following statement about the rock while it is on the air is correct? Okay, if you launch an object to the earth, to it will launch, you will launch with certain velocity v initial. The acceleration will be going down. This is the acceleration. The acceleration that the earth is making on the object is minus 9.8. If you consider that the earth is here, and the, and the velocity you have launched up, the acceleration is going down. This, this, this is at the time t equal t0. At a future time, t equal t1, the object will decrease his velocity a little bit. Later on, he will decrease his velocity a little bit. Later on, the velocity will be zero, and the acceleration is acting so now, later on, the, acceler the acceleration will produce a velocity going downwards. So velocity is zero, a velocity is small, so the velocity with respect to the time, it will start here at this velocity, later on will decrease, will decrease, the velocity will decrease, will be zero, and later on will be negative, negative, and negative, and this is performed in a rectilinear line, because the acceleration is constant, and the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second, per second. In every second, the velocity decreases 9.8 meters per second. Uh, so, once that I have said all this thing, let's go to read what it says. On the way down, both its velocity and acceleration are on the way down. Its velocity and acceleration are downwards. Yes, it's true. And at the highest point, at the high, both its velocity and acceleration are zero. No. At the highest point, it's true that the velocity is zero, but the acceleration is still minus 9.8. If this if there is no acceleration at the highest point, you cannot come back. <laughs> there is acceleration in, in going downward, and that's the case when you can come back. Okay, this is no. On the way up, he's a, a question, a, a option B. On the way up, his acceleration is downward. Yes, it's true. The acceleration is always downward. And his velocity is upward. Yes, yeah, it's true. On the way up, his velocity is upward. And at the highest point, both. His velocity and acceleration are zero. No, the acceleration is always minus 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay? Throughout the motion, option C, throughout the motion, the acceleration is downward. Yes. And the velocity is always in the same direction as the acceleration. No, the velocity changes, changes its direction. Here, the velocity is positive here. It's smaller, it's smaller, it's zero, and later on it's negative, negative, negative. So it will change, no. The acceleration is downward at all points in the motion. Yes, this is true. The acceleration is downward at all points, yes. Yes. And question E, the acceleration is downward at all points in the motion except that at zero at the highest point. No, no. Even at the highest point, the acceleration is still in minus 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Uh, now, this problem. This is not an easy problem, mm, but... Uh, we will do it. Uh, don't be scared about this problem. It says two objects are dropped from the bridge in an interval of one second apart. A rest system is negligible during the time. Both objects continue to fall. The separation 
increase, decrease, increase as per at first, but then stay constant, stay constant, decrease at first, but then stay constant. Wow. To analyze this problem, the only way is to write the equation of motion of every object. The first object, I have called it y1, the equation of motion is this one because it's the equation or the motion of an object that is moving with constant acceleration a equal g. The acceleration is a equal g a equal minus 9.8 a equal g 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay, so the equation of motion is y1, y0, minus one-half g, t squared. What is the equation of motion of the second object that is being launched in the same identical condition? The same height, y0, but the time is not t, is, is after one second. So I will have to change the t by t minus one. If I change the t by t minus 1 that I have shown you before in a problem uh, how to write this equation, you will have the equation of y2 of an object second that when you launch it, um, you launch it um, with a displacing time of one second. So this will be the equation. So what is rest is to make the difference y2 minus y1. If y2 minus y1 is constant, so the separation between them at any time t will be constant. If y2 minus y1, it depends on the time t, the separation will maybe increase with the time t. So I'm not going to do all the, all the work is done here. So what I have done is y2 minus y1, uh, you do the algebraic, uh, Please pay attention, y2 minus y1 doesn't have, and doesn't, it's not related with the slope, it's just related with the distance, y2 minus y1, this is y1, and when you, when you launch the other one, the other one will have another head, y2, it's the separation between them, the, the distance. So, for example, and the separation y2 minus y1 will be this equation. So, for example, if you place t equal one second, y2 will be y0 because it still has not been launched. And y1, the y1, will be y0 minus this amount, that is the amount that he has fall. It's a fall. He has fall the amount uh, minus one, in one second. He has fall this amount. So if you make the distance that separate y two minus y one, you will find that the distance y two is one half g. If you make the t equal to second, the separation y one minus y two y two minus y one, when the time t is two seconds. So you plug in two here and you plug in two here. So it will be this equation, and if you make the difference, the distance increase, three half of g, one half of g, three half of g. You can do it for t equal three, etc. So at the end, the general expression that you will find is that the difference is y two minus is minus one half g plus g by t. It depends on the time t for any, in general, for any time t. So as a conclusion, as the time passes, the distance that separate the two objects that are falling down increase. So if you go here, if you go to the questions, uh, to the questions, what is the question? Sorry, I'm sorry that I have moved this. Uh, uh, let me put it in his place, okay? So if you go to the questions, the um, correct answer should be that the distance between two during the time that both of objects continue to fall, the separation increase. This must be the correct answer. Yes. It doesn't decrease, decrease. No. 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 You may think that it stays constant. 
it's a good guess, but it's not, it's not happening this. The distance uh, increase. Why? Because as time passing, the velocity of the first object that was launched increase. Meanwhile, the other one, the velocity, it has a, a, a smaller velocity, so it's performing smaller distance over the time. So the distance will, its separation will increase. Well, uh, it was, a, 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 it was, a, I don't know if there is another way to see this problem, and this is no, okay. So the question is that increase. And now the last question, finally. Free fall, a ball is thrown downwards in the absence of uh, after it's a bit received. Which statement concerning this acceleration is correct? Well, the acceleration is always minus 9. If you put the positive direction like this, the acceleration will be in this direction. Is acceleration constantly decrease? It is constant. No, it's constant. No. The acceleration constant, yes, yes, the acceleration is constant. Is, um, if, you, if you have the floor here, the acceleration will be going downwards. Um, is acceleration is greater than no, no, and no. Okay, so this is the correct answer. Okay, that's all. Uh, good luck.